Today we're going through working with functions or a composition of functions, which means more than one. So when you define composite, you use in the book, it's going to talk to you about, you're going to see that. I want you to study example one and try those eight through 11 there. Okay. Go for it, Nick. What's composite? When you combine two functions. When you combine two functions, that's a composite. So in example one, we're going to do eight through 11 there. You've hopefully looked at those. In this one, it says f of x equals x minus 2 and g of x equals x squared. Evaluate g of f of negative 5. Now, g of f of negative 5, this is in example 1. What answer did they get for that? What was g of f of negative 5? It was 49? Anyone second that? Okay, thank you. So you'll note the difference here. We have g of f of negative 5. They're asking us on number 8 to find f of g of negative 5. Note the difference. The g and the f have changed. So when you're dealing with, this is like a nested function. You'll hear that sometimes, okay, where you have to do two different things. We're going to put this piece in for the g of x first. We're going to, put, we're going to substitute that in. So if I go g of negative 5, that gives me negative 5 squared which is 25. So now rather than having f of g of negative 5, I have f of, okay, since g of negative 5 equals 25, I can put that in right here. So now I have g of, or excuse me, f of 25. So once we put that in, we're going to substitute that over here. f of 25 equals 25 minus 5 or excuse me, minus 2, which is 23. So f of g of negative 5 equals 23. g of f of negative 5 equals 49. Are they the same? Does it matter which order you do them in? Yeah, order matters in this case. Okay, now how many of you got this answer, 23 here? Okay, order matters, right? So you guys have done stuff with order before. We've talked about like 3 plus 4. That's the same thing as 4 plus 3. You know that 2 times 6 is the same thing as 6 times 2. What property is that? Jody? It's not the associative. Starts with a C. Yes, it is the commutative. Yeah, it's like commuting to the inbox and back, like we just talked about, dude. Dude, carpool, right? Paper pool. Okay, so it's commutative property. Is our functions, our composition of functions, are they commutative? Does order matter? Yeah, the order in which you do them matters. So they're not commutative. Here, order didn't matter. Just like subtraction. Is subtraction commutative? Is 3 minus 9 equal 9 minus 3? No, they're not equal. Is division, is that commutative? No, order matters. Okay, not commutative. So make sure we're kind of working from the inside outward. All right, any questions there? Okay, let's take a look at number 9. Number 9 says let f of x equal 5x minus 1 and g of x equal 2x evaluate f or g of f of negative 1 and f of g of negative 1. So you guys have hope, hopefully completed this to the best of your ability. So if I'm doing g of f of negative 1, that means I'm taking this part, I'm working from the inside out, I'm starting with the f of negative 1. From there I'm going to say f of x, which is 5x minus 1, I'm going to put negative 1 in for x, so that becomes f of negative 1, which is what we have there, equals 5 times negative 1 minus 1. So our input's negative 1, our output is going to be negative 5 minus 1 or negative 6. We then use that as our g of x, or so our g of whatever, it's our input and our in our g of x function. Okay, so we now have g of negative 6. f of negative 1 is negative 6. Okay, how many of you got that? 
How many are with me there? How many of you do programming? Plan on doing programming of some sort, writing code, anything like that. Okay, all of that stuff includes nested functions. A function within a function. For this class, or not from this class, but my algebra class, we have, I don't know, a huge chunk of kids in this building in algebra, 400 kids or so. We have a program that I wrote on Excel that takes, tracks all the kids based on a one or a zero that I've inputted. It's not binary, but we input that and it assigns them tasks and it prints off reports and it all took me writing these big long functions for us to, for that to happen without me having to go in and recalculate it. Okay, It's all nested functions. When you have something that depends on something else, you're dealing with two functions here. So we have f of negative 1, that piece that we get from that input is going to give us the new input for our g of x one. So now we're going to go g of negative 6. So in our g of x equation, which is 2x, we go g of negative 6 gives us 2 times negative 6 or negative 12. How many got that? Negative 12? Okay. Any questions there? How many, who has the answer for this one? I'm not going to work it out. Jocelyn, what do you got? Negative 11. Negative 11. Anyone second that? Okay, me. Anyone get something different? Okay, so this is negative 11. We agree that f of g of negative 1 is negative 11. Okay, very good. Okay, what was g of negative 1? On that part, let me erase or get rid of that. Negative 2, you guys got that? Okay, so you had to do g of negative 1 is negative 2, so you had to do f of negative 2 to get the negative 11. All right, very good. Okay, rate yourself 1 to 5 right there so far. 5, you're good. One, you're not so good. Don't copy other people's numbers. I want to know you, not them. I mean, I want to know them too, but you know. All right. Let's take a look at number 10. Let f of x equals x squared minus 4 and g of x equals 3x. Explain why g of f of x equals 3x squared minus 12. This is the one I messed up, third period, why I'm having to record right now. So we totally messed this one up. How many have done this one? How many got confused on it? Okay, how many just didn't get to it? Okay. Well, here, let's go through it together. If I know f of x equals x squared minus 4 and g of x equals 3x, if I want to do g of f of x, one thing you could do is notice when you're doing your input for your g of x equation, you're saying my input for the g of x is whatever f of x is. Okay? So rather than having f of x here, which is also here, we can put whatever is equal to f of x right there. So f of x equals x squared minus 4. Using that thing that you learned back in algebra called substitution, how many remember substitution? You can change that f of x to x squared minus 4. We could actually say g of f of x we could change that to become g of, rather than f of x, let's call it x squared minus 4. Okay? You guys with me on that? Okay. So g of x, our g of x equation is 3x. Okay, well, if I put 3x down here and I put this thing in for my x, which is what we've been doing, that means I actually have, rather than x here, I have g of x squared minus 4 equals 3 times x squared minus 4. You guys with me there? Yeah. And that makes this become 3x squared minus 12. Some students like doing it that way versus actually figuring out what f of x is first and then putting it in. I personally don't like it as much, but that's really what's happening there. Okay, and there are times when you're going to have to do that because you can't get a specific value, a numeric value out. So you're going to have a variable in there, and that's okay. okay. It's a little misleading. That's probably supposed to be the, the up there, but that's okay. Any questions? Kind of weird. Nick? Well, it's explaining why, right? 
So in this one, showing the work would be more of your explanation. All right. Okay. How many shop? How many still have mom shop for you all the time? I know some of you do that. Okay. Okay. No one has their mom shop on? Quiet, some of you do. Like clothes. Come on. Come on, dude. For your clothes. Any, anyone ever buy their own stuff? With your, or with your parents' money? Okay. Now, when you go shopping, how many of you have ever bought something on sale? Okay. How many of you bought something using a coupon? Okay. Or a coupon. All right. Well, here we're going to talk about using a coupon and buying something on sale. So, a clothing store offers a 10% discount sale on its $25 blue jeans. Okay. First of all, everyone know how to find a discount, a 10% without a calculator? Call me old-fashioned, but like some of you are going to start dating soon, and guys, if you take a girl to somewhere other than like McDonald's, and like somewhere where you sit down and eat, and a waitress and a waiter come and help you, um, you leave a tip at the end, and tip 15 to 20 percent. Okay. Now, if you don't have your calci with you, and some of you are like I just use my phone. Okay, well. If you want to do it discreetly rather than saying, hey, can I borrow your phone and figure out a tip? Or, dude, I can't remember how to do decimals on my phone. Okay, whatever. Um, if you're going to leave a 10%, which is kind of cheapen it out, but that's all right, 10% tip. Okay, 10% of anything you just take and move the decimal over one. It's $2.50. 20% then would be twice that, or? Five dollars. Okay, so if your bill was twenty-five bucks, you'd leave a five-dollar tip. Okay. That being said, we're talking about blue jeans here. If you're at the store and you're trying to figure out how much those jeans are, you're like I only have like twenty bucks. Is that going to be ten percent? And you ask the person that works there, and their smoke starts rolling out of their ears because they don't know. They're like, uh, I never liked man, you know, and and so they couldn't figure it out. So you have twenty-five, and you want ten percent off. Or, if you're not going to pay 10%, what percent are you paying? If you're not paying 10, you're paying 90, right? Right, because 10 and 90 make 100. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're taking the 10% off, which is the same thing as paying 90%. Okay, well, I find it easier just to look at it and go, well, I know 10% of 25 is 250, so 25 minus 250 is... 2250. Okay. That's how you could do 10%. You could also multiply it by 0.9 for those of you who are like, I'm not doing things in my head. That's crazy. Okay. You also have a coupon. Coupon. Worth $5 off any item in the store. How much would you pay for the jeans if the clerk applied the coupon first and then applied the discount? Well, let's do that. We go 25 and we subtract 5. We get 20. All right. And then we take 10% off of 20. How much are we taking off? Yes. 20 minus 2 is? 18. 18. Now, I will tell you, I've actually been in this situation, not the jeans thing, but where I've said, hey, I want you to take the percentage off first and then keep on. They're like, no, it won't matter. And I'm like, yeah, it will matter. And like, I'm pretty confident about it because, dude, I teach it. You know, I like know the math. You should be confident too when they say, hey, it won't matter. You're like, uh, yeah. It will matter, and you can show them how. You don't have to be a jerk about it. I wasn't a jerk. Okay, I try to be. I still be pretty kind. Okay, but let's see. What price would they pay if you they applied the 10% and then subtracted the coupon? So we'd have 25 minus what? 250 is 2250 minus five. Yeah, seventeen fifty, seventeen dollars fifty cents. Now, is there a better deal? Well, of course. Take the percent first. You're taking a percent, a higher percentage off. Okay. Now it's fifty cents. Some of you are like, dude, it's just fifty cents of my mom's money. I don't care. Okay. So if that's the case, 
so be it. However, if it's a car, it might be a few hundred bucks, depending upon your car. Okay, if it's a house, I don't know where you get a coupon for a house, but hey, um, you know, I mean, if it's something where you're dealing with a discount, a percent, and then a discount, or a discount, then a percent off, always take the percent off first. All right, it matters. Order matters, though. All right, I'm going to be handing out your assignment. While I'm handing out your assignments, I want you to complete problems 15 and 16 up there, please. 15 and 16. Okay, like I said, some of you are going to make the mistake here, so let's talk about this one. If I have f of x equals 3x plus 8 and g of x equals 2x minus 12, I want to subtract g of x from f of x. So I'm going to take my 3x plus 8 and substitute it in for f of x. So that became that. And I'm going to subtract my 2x minus 12. Now, some of you may realize right now that you made the mistake. Some of you still don't see where the mistake is made. It's a minus sign outside of parentheses. That's like having a negative 1, which means you distribute, which doesn't affect you anywhere until, like right here, most of you always already had minus 2x. But it affects you right here, and you get plus 12. Anyone want to volunteer that they made the mistake? Okay. It happens. It happens a lot. So please remember, substitute in parentheses and make sure you distribute that negative or flip all your signs gives you x plus 20. Can't solve for x. We don't we can't solve for x. We don't know what it equals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions there? Okay, number 16 says f of x equals negative 2x plus 7. Find 3 times f of 9x. We got to start by the inside. You could do f of 9x equals negative 2 times 9x. Plugging that in for the x plus 7, which gives us negative 18x plus 7. Can we put those together? Can't put them together. They're not like terms. Do we bring down the f of 9x? Well, we could, but does it have any bearing on this side? No, that's just telling us what f of 9x. If our input's 9x, our output is that. We, put, we can put f of 9x, we know that that equals this thing. That gets plugged in. That piece gets plugged in right there for f of 9x. So we have 3 times negative 18x plus 7. Or 3 times negative 18 is negative 52. Is that right? 54, thank you. 54x. And 3 times 7 is 21. Mr. Colstead would not be happy that I'm using pen right now, but he's not here. And he can't fail me anymore. So, all right. High school math teacher, just saying. Use pen too much in his class. Negative 54x plus 21 has the answer. Okay, your assignment, contrary to Austin, Austin, if you're listening right now to the video lesson, I'm not giving them any more either. <laughs>